Hello world, it's me, Jamangbai. For today's episode, I'll be building what I could have had in figure form, but I chose to be hesitant, and now I have to build it. This is the Motoroid BX-02 Bloodia from the Good Smile Company, powered by Sentinel. Some of you might remember this red mecha appearing alongside the character Jin Sao Tomei in the Marvel vs. Capcom series, but Bloodia is originally from the game Cyberbots. Everything that I'm showing you right here is what's included inside the box. And when it's all completed, it will look like this. But we'll get to that later. Let's build up!
All right, let's take a look at Bloodia. If you want the long short, I love the hell out of this model, but I would much rather have the Sentinel Riobot figure that I passed on many years ago. Despite a couple of shortcomings, mainly with missing colors and a missed opportunity for proper part separation, Bloodia is a solid model, a true joy to pose, and a true joy to have because there's barely any Cyberbots merchandise out there. Unless I'm missing something, you can always let me know in the comments below if I am. <laughs> Building Bloodio was honestly stress-free, clocking in at an hour and 50 minutes of my time. Each part connected very firmly and could easily be disconnected in case you mess up and have to backtrack. But this is from my own personal experience. There is one particular area that requires you to use glue, this part of the torso, which I broke out the thin cement for. I also ended up applying it to a few smaller parts that may or may not fall off over time. We're playing the longevity game with these model kits, so it's better to be safe than sorry. One of my favorite parts was building the shoulder and knee pads, mostly because of how satisfying it was to slide the spikes into place. It might sound a bit weird, but I just had to mention it. This isn't my first rodeo with Motoroid kits. I built another Cyberbots model kit prior to this, the Riot, just to get an idea of what I'd be getting myself into. If I were to compare the process of both, building Bloodia was simpler, while B Riot was a bit more demanding, thanks to an arm with a pistol gimmick and articulated fingers. But overall, both experiences proved to be great in the end. Even though I missed out on the original figure, this is still Bloodia, one of my favorite mechs in video games. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that I actually have it. And on top of that, it has great articulation. It honestly has me hoping that one of these days, someone will release a Jin Saotome figure so I can complete the set. The colors I feel are spot on, but it's apparent that there are some actually missing. And the only way that you can make it right is by, you've guessed it, painting it. Honestly, it's something I could let pass with this kit, but certain areas could have actually benefited from better part separation to bring out certain areas more. Motoroid kits aren't cheap, so when you miss out on simpler things like what should be white on the assault satellite or black wheels for bloodiest feet, I can't help but feel like, how could you? The one thing in this kit that is painted are the eyes on Bloodia's face. There isn't a color guide in the manual, so if you were to paint it, you'll have to rely on the product shots on the box or inside the manual. Look up Bloodia illustrations online, or if you had the Sentinel Riobot BX-02 diecast metal Bloodia figure, you wouldn't have to worry about any of this shit. With detailing, I've done my usual panel lining using black accent color. And if it looks a bit cleaner than other kits that I've built on the channel so far, it's all thanks to my wonderful Gundam Erase Marker. I think it looks fine. The missing colors aren't really a deal breaker to me, and it shouldn't be to anybody who actually wants the kit for themselves. There is a gimmick with this model which enables you to create the Player 2 version of Bloodia simply by removing the arms, twisting the shoulder ports the opposite way, and attaching them to the opposite sides. If you own B Riot and want to have a little fun, swap parts of Bloodia, just like it's done in the game Armored Warriors. If you're not familiar with that game, it's a beat-em-up that Bloodia makes his first appearance in prior to the release of Cyberbots. This is both cool and probably unnecessary at the same time, but definitely worth it. I mean, look at this insanity! Bloodia has a handful of accessories in his arsenal, including closed fists, dynamic open hands, the assault satellite, which attaches to Bloodia's backpack, a retracted version of the Gatling Rod, an extended version of the Gatling Rod, both of which you can attach to Bloodia's left forearm, and his shield gun that you can only attach to Bloodia's right forearm. Bloodia is armed and ready with articulation. So, let's check the flex.
Scale isn't specified with this model kit, but Bloodiest stands a bit over 4 inches tall. Let's do some size comparisons. Intergrade Gundam RX-78 II, 30 Minute Mission Spinatio, Sengoku Type, and Motoroid B-Riot. I went into this build knowing that I wasn't getting what I wanted out of it, aside from it being bloodier in some form. I really wanted that Riobot figure from years ago, but it was a little pricey back then, and it's even pricier now. I love a great diecast mecha figure, but yeah, no, I'm not gonna give in to the aftermarket right now and hope for a re-release. So here I am, stuck building an awesome kit, but the experience overall was amazing. I wish different choices were made with the part separation in some areas, but on a brighter side, the quality of this kit is phenomenal, and after building two of these, I must build more Motoroid. And that wraps up for today's episode of Jumong by Builds. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching. If you're new around here, I hope you decide to stick around because there's more on the way. I'll catch you in the next episode. But in the meantime, keep on building. Peace!